All right, today we are talking about what I'm calling the ultimate data card. So if you guys remember when I did the video on data management, you can watch it up here. Uh, I showed a data card that I had made for myself and a lot of you asked for it in the comments saying, hey, can you make it available for download? It has everything that I need, I'd like to have that. And so I said, yes, but I wanna make some tweaks to it. Mainly that I wanted to change a couple of things and add in some other things that, uh, that didn't weren't on there. And I wanted a way for it to be more intuitive, a way that you could utilize a lot of the information that we're able to gain from Kestrels but be able to do it without getting the Kestrel out and without using a rangefinder. So a lot of concerns that guys have currently based on things going on around the world is near IR, um, the advances of technology and being able to triangulate positions based off of things like rangefinders, uh, lasers, and even maybe even using a Kestrel that has Bluetooth capability. So something that people are worried about. So how can we create a data card that allows you to have that information without using those technologies. So if you want to go full analog, you could do it without having to do the math, still get the information quickly. So that's what I've done here. Now it's actually two cards and I'm gonna give you an overlay so you'll be able to actually look at these so they look better versus me just showing the top down camera. So there's two cards. I'm gonna start with the second one simply because it's the more simple of the two, which is essentially if you're doing angled shooting. So uh, whatever degree you're, or you, whatever angle you have in degrees, you just find it, and then it'll tell you what the cosine is of that. So basically you come up with your final solution, you multiply it by the cosine, and it gives you your data. You can do that quickly if you have to do an angled shot. Next to that, you will see that there is a big open area that says ammo shift. Now this whole area is just for notes, but that ammo shift is for if you have two different types of ammo. So maybe you're using green tip, and then something like Mark 262, and then maybe 55 grain, you can keep track of what your zero shift is in all those. You can also keep track of if you have uh, shift uh, suppressed versus unsuppressed. So if you take your suppressor off and you have to go up two clicks and left two clicks, cool, you can put that in there. Whatever data you wanna keep around your ammo or zero shift, you can do that there. And then any additional notes you wanna keep, you can do that. Now, this one is the more complicated one. And this where this came from is actually from my days playing football. So I played at a high school that had a very successful football program. And we utilized some pretty complicated uh, arm boards for plays and formations and things like that. But that's where the idea for this came from. Uh, I wanted to take all the information that I use out of a Kestrel, still using the Kestrel to get the information, but just pull it out of there and put it into a data card so, so I can go full analog if I wanted to. Now, this is built around my environmentals and my gun profile. So you'll need to adjust it accordingly for your, your profile and then your environmentals. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, but just keep that in mind. Uh, when you download this, you may need to make some tweaks in there so that it better suits your needs. Across the top, uh, we have all your traditional information. So you'll see your rifle, uh, what ammo you have, uh, all your environmentals, your gun number, and you'll notice some highlighted boxes in there. And we'll talk a little about those in a minute. Uh, coming over to the far left column. So this is probably one of my favorite features that I've added to this card is that in this far left column, you'll find these different numbers, 3.4, 2.6, 2.2, going all the way down. These Then they're kind of scattered at random distances uh, to about 675. Beyond that, we don't use them. And the reason for that is this is for quick ranging. So if you want to range a target without utilizing a laser rangefinder because you don't want to use a laser, then you can mill that target in your reticle. So your, your reticle is a ruler. You measure that red, the target. And so this is all based off of a 12 inch target namely because most humans from the top of their head to the point of their shoulder is roughly 12 inches. You can also go from the top of your shoulder, I think to your elbow, roughly 12 inches on most humans. Um, that's a whole nother deep dive topic, talking about the 12 inch drill and some other applications. But if you know anything about that, you can use that to uh, range a target. In there, if you'll, you'll see that um, a 12 inch target that measures 3.4 mils is at 100 yards. You could go down and if you were looking through your reticle and say, okay, that, that from the top of his head to his shoulder, 1.1 mils. Okay, so he's 300 yards, my hold is 1.2, and then you can go to your, to your win there. So that's how that works. And so just to the right of that column, you'll notice we have a column and that's all your yardages and that just carries over. So you have all your yardages. So again, you're gonna have your mil, your mil distances, your yardage, and then you have what your hold is gonna be, and then your win. So the blank blank lines in the one that you're seeing on the screen is gonna be where you would fill in for your data, your dope for your particular profile. To the right of that, you will see we got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and then it carries over. Uh, that is your quick wind, but you notice that when it gets over on the other side where it gets into the yellow, that yellow highlighted area, all that denotes is that that is when our spin drift starts to kick in. So if you look at the far right of this, this chart, you see a highlighted area, it says spin drift. So it's just telling you that where the highlighted yellow is is where your spin drift is starting to matter. So for me, with this specific profile, the way it's built out in my environmentals, at 500 yards, I start to have 0.1 mil of spin drift. So I need to hold left 0 0.1 mil. So that's why you see this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and then at 1,000 yards, 0.4 mils. 
So just whatever final win solution I come up to, I'm just gonna add or subtract that 0.1 or 0.4 mils left of whatever my final hold was. So that's how I added in spin drifts. You can quickly do that. If you have more time, obviously you can be more precise. If you have less time, you don't have time to do that. You can just quickly go off of your quick wind, which is that number right above that point whatever L. So that is your, uh, your spin drift and then your quick wind. Again, if you missed out on the wind uh, video I did with Kestrel, you can watch that up here, but we talk about truing your quick wind, right? So we, we all know the, the quick wind charts. We've all seen uh, 0.1 uh, to 1.0 at 1,000. In theory, yes, but there you do need to true your wind because every projectile is going to be a little bit different. So that is your wind. Now, the column to the right of that in the red, the red column that goes down, so that is going to be your mover at those different distances. That's what your moving hold is at those different distances. So again, if you look up at the top, you notice there is a little box that is highlighted red. It says six miles an hour, and that denotes that this is a six mile an hour mover, and that's what my hold is. The reason I did six mile an hour is that it gives me a quick reference point. Thanks to Bruiser Industries, he recommended I go off a six mile an hour and do that. So that way, if you want to cut it in half for a walker or a light jog, you can do that and just cut it down to three miles an hour. So you cut whatever this is in half. If they're at a full sprint, you just double it at 12 miles an hour. So it's a quick way to get your movers uh, to keep track of that. Everybody has their, has their own preferences on miles an hour. So you can change that, alter that in the, in the chart, in the Excel sheet uh, when you download it. The other two things you will notice at the top that are highlighted, one is green and one is orange. So with the green one first, it says U1.5. 400 MPB. Now what that means is if I dial up 1.5 mils, I have a mass point blank out to 400 yards. Now this is on a 40 inch E-type. Now this will keep you within sort of the vital zone of that 40 inch E-type, but you're good on a 40 inch E-type, which would be a human torso. Um, so you see this highlighted green area. So if I were looking quickly at a glance, I would know if I dial 1.5 for that first column, I'm good there. I can hit anything E-type-ish uh, with 1.5 mils, be good to go. Then you'll notice there is an orange highlighted box at the top, and that says D1.6, 156573SD. So what that stands for is I'm gonna dial down 1.6, and from 156 to 573, that is gonna be my speed drop. So you'll notice there is a outlined orange box from 150 to 575, and that just denotes that in that area, if my targets fall within that range, I know my speed drop is good to go in that area, and I can dial that speed drop, take advantage of it at that, those distances. And my I have my Kestrel set uh, with an error of 0.1 mils. You may have it at 0.2, but it's up to you. You can change this data accordingly, but that's my speed drop. That's what I have it at. Uh, and that's how that's set up. Uh, over on the bottom right, you're gonna notice there is a wind rose, and that's just for you to make a more accurate calculated uh, wind call. So if you need, if you have time to do the math, or if you wanna make a quick wind call, you can do that. You can just reference the wind rows and kind of get an idea of what your wind value is uh, of a full value wind. Uh, then you'll notice we have uh, AJ, CB, and so AJ is gonna be your aerodynamic jump. So for me, when I fill that in, it's gonna be 0.1 mils at eight miles an hour. So at eight mile an hour is when I get an aerodynamic jump of 0.1 mils. So again, your environmentals, your projectiles will alter that. Use your Kestrel to find that out. Again, you can go watch videos, see how to do that. And then CB I have in there, which is gonna be your cold bore. Now, some people subscribe to it, some people don't. If that's not you, you can just delete that and leave that space open for something else. If it is something that you do keep track of, then I would say you could put it in there. Um, you can also swap out that info or something else that's more useful to you. Uh, this is fully customizable. You can change this tweak it however you need. I will make it available in an Excel sheet and a PDF. Now, if you are not a freak in the sheets, meaning you don't get down with being able to change stuff in Excel sheets, you can't figure out how to do that. The easy way to do this is I will make a second version that's available in just black and white. And what you can do is take highlighters and take colored pins and get the same setup. So uh, what you would do is just figure out your max point blank. You would go in, fill that out, uh, and then just highlight the boxes that you need. And then where the orange is, you would just outline that with an orange pin. Again, highlighting red and yellow. Uh, I do wanna note one thing on here, just above the wind rows, it says against wind, add with wind, subtract. And what that is for is for your mover. So if your mover is going against the wind, you're gonna add that, move, that mover to it. If it is moving with the wind, you're gonna subtract from the wind. So just a quick reference point, quick reminder for you in there. But that is a quick way for you to utilize a lot of the information and data we get from Kestrels, because Kestrels are very, very powerful tools. I do work with them, I do do stuff with them, yes, 100%, but it's because I believe in the product and it's very, very useful. And the big concern that I heard a lot of guys say was, well, what if I don't have time to get it out? Or what if I don't wanna get caught using it? This is a way to utilize that information. So, and you can do it again with, with your ballistic solver of choice. 
but this is a, an easy way to keep track of that. So again, download will be available in the description down below. Uh, if you have questions about it, if you have comments about it, if you think there's something I should tweak about it in a future version, uh, leave it in the comments down below. If you love it, tell me why in the comments down below. If you hate it, tell me why down in the comments below. Below. I don't know what I was just trying to say there. Uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Cry to tap that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. And if you find this information useful, if you find these videos useful or entertaining or whatever, send them to your friends. Let's help me grow the channel. I'd like to, to get to 100,000 by the end of the year. It's a pretty steep ask, but uh, I'd like to do it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, armband really quick. I know people are gonna ask. This is the big data armband from Sun and Shadow. Uh, shout out to John. He did make me a version that has the quarterback sleeve. So very thankful for that. If this is something you want and there is enough demand Leave it in the comments down below. That way we can tell John. Maybe John makes it available for us again. I prefer this over the two straps. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, maybe John will make them for everybody else. Don't you love it when you record a whole video and then realize it wasn't recording? So you got to do it again? No, just me. Cool, 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 cool.